So the first thing that we are doing is building our egg shape. And we're not doing it from the wrist or the fingers because that's how we draw small. It's coming from the shoulder, all right? And I'm going very light. And what you want to do is create that egg shape. As you analyze and refine your line, you're able then to darken it up. And if you notice, I, I rotate my paper. So work on that egg shape. And I'm analyzing, refining, erasing. Remember, your eraser is your best friend. Analyze those lines, refine those lines. After I've got my egg, I draw a line down the center. I split it in half. Why would I split it in half? Who knows? Okay. Okay. What would that line? What did we learn about the sugar skulls? That you had the, it the same on what? What is that called? Symmetry. symmetry. This is your line of symmetry, meaning what is on this side appears on that side. Does that make sense? So once you have that line of symmetry. You draw a line from the top out, the top of the head, the bottom of the head. If you notice, I'm making a light rectangle. Do you see that? Again, don't be afraid to rotate your paper. Do you see the, the rectangle I have now with that line of symmetry? I'm going to look at that rectangle, and I'm going to cut that rectangle in half. Do you see how I cut it in half? That's where my eyes go. That's the line for the eyes. Halfway. That is the nose. Notice I'm building the form and the structure, and then the other half is the mouth. Do you see it starting to come together? Analyze your shapes, refine. Young artists always analyze, well, any artist, analyzes their work and refines it. It's not a race. Don't let the left brain make you go faster than what your right brain will see, look, analyze, refine, erase. It's okay. It's not who's done first. Accuracy is key. You have examples in those packets of the face. You have the step-by-step uh, in the Google Classroom. Once you have that, you add a curved something here and something here. What does this represent? Ears. Your ears fall between your eyes and your nose. Did you know that? Yeah. If you drew, if you go from your ears to your nose and around, or from your eyes to your nose around, your ears fall in that. 
Now that I've got those ears, I can now place my eyes. Do you know that you have... You, bre- you end up breaking from here to here into fifths. So I've got one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths. You see how I broke that into fifths? So I have this, 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 and this. Those are These dots here are the ones that I'm primarily going to be using. Give me a thumbs up when you are ready. Okay. Because we're going to then do the shapes of the eyes to get our eye placement. And when you do your eyes, I look at it as almost like a football. So I'm making like a football. Half the football on top of the line, half of it on the other side of the line. Do you see? See how my eye placement looks correct? It's halfway. I lightly will draw two lines down from the center of the eye where the tear duct is. Because if you look, if you do this, the corner of your nostril, if you drew a straight line up, lines up directly with your tear duct. So you bring a line down. That will give you the placement for the nostrils and the nose. Does that make sense? So now that I have my placement for the nose, I will then do a, like a C. C here and a reverse C there. Give me a thumbs up. Still working? Continually look and refine your work. Now from there you've got, it. you come up almost like a hook. You make a little hook and you come down, touch that line. That's my nose placement. Now, I'm just placing right now. I'm constructing. It's like building a house. I'm building my foundation. I'm not adding the details yet. All right? I'm just making sure that the placement is correct. I'm refining as I go along. To refine, you erase and redraw. Analyze, refine. Now, I go halfway in the middle of the eyes and I bring a line down here. Because that's roughly where the mouth will be. The corner of your mouth is about the center of your eye. Now I'm to the point where I need to decide, am I going to make this a male or a female? Now, let me guess, how many of you girls would draw a girl? How many of you girls would draw a boy? How many of you boys would draw a girl? No, I, if, in your drawing, how many of you 
automatically draw a girl every single time. How many of you draw boys? Why is that? Why do you think that is? Water boy. Because of your gender. You're used to it. You see yourself in the mirror every day, don't you? You know your features. All right? Now, <clears throat> the proportions are the same. The male and female have the same proportions. It's mathematics. You have the same proportions. You have differing features. Your shapes of your eyes are different. Your faces are symmetrical, but they're asymmetrical. Do you know what asymmetrical means? Almost symmetrical. Because it's not identical. Symmetry is identical. The butterfly wings are symmetrical. They're identical on both sides. Your face is asymmetrical because do you know that you have one eye larger than the other? Some people have a different shape to one of their ears. So it's asymmetrical. It is not exactly symmetrical. But we still have that line of symmetry because you have an eye on one side of your face, you have an eye on the other. You have an ear, you have an ear. You have one nostril, you have another nostril. All right? So now I'm going to decide, am I going to draw a male or female? I'm going to draw a female. So the first thing I'm going to do is start here at the tear duct and start to put that eyeliner and lashes because women tend to darken the tops of their, their eyes um, to make their lashes more pronounced. So I'm going to do that. Yes, you're following step by step. Don't worry, you're going to draw male too, just not today. I'm not asking you to say anything. You're done. I do it to the other one. All right. And then a three quarter circle in each one in the center. Put an eyelid above each one. And I'm starting to build that form. I'm building in those shapes for the eyebrows. Now, how many of you have worked with clay? Now with clay, you can add and take away, correct? You add clay or you remove clay to find that shape, right, that you're trying to build. You're doing the same thing with your pencil. So now that I've got the basic egg shape, I can add to it, all right? So I'm going to build the cheekbone and come out a little bit to give a little bit of a jaw. However, I'm going to round it. Women have curves. They're, they don't have square jaws. They have round, softer lines. I'm going to do the same. And I'm analyzing and refining those shapes to make sure that they are somewhat symmetrical. And I see that this is not, so I'm erasing, bringing this down. Still not liking it. All right. Your upper lip, you want to put a curve here, right on that line of symmetry. That's going to be for your upper lip. If you look, 
you've got a, a cleft there. It curves. It's like a, a cavern. All right? And then I bring it down to the corner. Turn this so you guys can see it a little bit better. And since I'm seeing this in reverse, I'm seeing that I this line is still bugging me. So I then what type of we talked about the three major types of line, right? What type of line is this? No, Mia? Yeah. Implied. Why is it implied line? It's not the full lip. Exactly. I've implied that it goes up and connects, right? So it's an implied line. So now it's starting to look more like a female, isn't it? Now, I'm going to start to erase some of those construction lines. I no longer need them. So I'm lightly erasing them, cleaning it up a little bit. That's why you want it to draw very lightly. Now, feel your nose. We have like a bulb, don't we? Like a round little bulb. So I'm going to use what line again, Mia? Implied. Implied to draw that little bulb, right? Put two lines on the other, either side. Do you see them? And I'll put like a little bit of the bridge of the nose. You know how your nose goes up and spreads around your ocular cavity? Now I'm starting to refine the details. Now I'm going to add the pupil to the iris. And I'm not making a black circle. If you notice, I'm leaving white. Why am I leaving white? Like a sparkle, the highlights of your eyes. And I'll even do a little thing here to help in the uh, iris, which is the color part of your eye. Now I'm starting to refine more. I'm looking at the eyebrows. Now, your eyebrow hair, ladies, while you're plucking your eyebrows, you look, your eyebrows go back this way, don't they? The hair goes back towards the ears. So you're going to want to do some lines going back towards the ears in that shape, darkening that up. You're building that form. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Now remember, this is just a generic face. What I mean by generic, I'm not looking at specific details. This is just building the structure. Because when you do your self-portraits, you will then look at the details. Does that make sense? You will look at the shape of your eye, the shape of your face. Some people have more pronounced jawline. Some people have more pronounced cheekbones. That's where you alter it, all right? Those are the details. Those are not the structure or the form or the proportion. So now that leaves me to the ears. You know what those Nautilus shells? Have you seen like them cut in half where they, they're like curly? That's kind of how your ears are. They come and they curl, don't they? You've got this curl, it starts here and it comes down. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come down to here, bring this. 
There's my ear. Girls tend to wear earrings, so I'm going to add a loop earring. Continue on. I'm going to circulate quick. Remember to analyze and refine. Yes. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. It's underneath Avery. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you with the eraser. So you do the same to the other side. the earring is not the same size so I'm going in and refining constantly analyzing and refining I might bring in some lines here to indicate the cheekbone might be a little curve there to show the chin again an implied line I then bring the neck from the jawline here down and I might end up dropping just a drop shadow to help separate the head from the neck so we're building that form mm -hmm. we're now starting to add those details Now the part that everybody hates. The hair. Collective groan, I know. Hold it. I'll wait. So what I'm going to do is start here, almost like a widow's peak. Because a lot of times girls have their hair parted down the center. So I'm going to go and bring a loop down here and I'm going to have her have it tucked behind her ear. Notice I'm overlapping the eyebrow, but I drew the eyebrow first, all right? And then maybe I have it come down, maybe there'll be a strand here. Comes behind the ear. Now to clarify things, I'm going to remove the head, meaning the line, the top of the circle. behind her, right? So maybe I'll just shade that in to give that depth. Do you see how that pushes the hair back? You've got the hair in the foreground going behind her ear. And I constructed that hair on top of the head. I didn't construct the head underneath the hair. I'll do the same on the other side.
again, erase the head. I'm just shading this to show that that's the hair that's behind. Notice I'm not scribbling. Like you guys color your hair, you just go for long hair. I'm breaking it up into shapes. <laughs> yeah, I've got a shape here that comes. And I've got a shape here that comes. I'm not sitting there shading your hair like you shaded your hair in the past, where you just scribbling it. All right? Your hair has form and shape as well. Let's see. Okay, so you've analyzed. Is your nose too high up? Yeah, then refine, refine it. Erase it and redo it. That's My looking really good. My eyes are too short. My hair is too short. That's Remember, this is where you analyze and refine your work. Artists do it all the time. They look. They erase. Your eraser is your best friend. It'll get you out of a jam. Just erase and start over. That is the basics for finding the proportions of the human head. Now, the details change. This is a generic one. This is like, you know, buying the Walmart brand. It's a cookie cutter. But it looks like a female, yes? Looks like a girl. It's because I use the proper proportions. All right? And I use the measurements. I use the rule of half. I now can clean up all of those lines and refine. Tighten it up. is correct. Now the finite details are different. You notice that your proportions are correct? Why? It's now looking at the details. And that's being more right brain than left brain. In that pack, you've got details on eyes. You have details on mouth, ears, all of that. This is your demo. If you followed along, you're halfway done with the project. We're going to be doing a few of these. All right, this is a practice. You're gonna to have to do two, two finals, a male and a female. This is your practice, you constructing it. Remember, it's all repetition. It's like building a house. It's like when we first did the skulls. How many of you noticed when you did your first sugar skull and followed the steps, it looked better than your third one that you didn't follow the steps? Yeah. You guys are not able to cut steps yet. I can because I've been doing it for 40 years. You've been doing it for right now 40 minutes. So it's going to be repetition. It's like playing music, all right? And don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't compare yourself to me. Like I said, I've had more practice than you. You all can do it. It's all mathematics. It's just breaking it into halves, knowing that you can fit five eyes across your eye line. How many of you didn't know that? A lot of you. How many of you didn't know that your nostrils go straight up to your tear duct? Or that the corners of your mouth go towards the center of your eyes, the middle of your eyes? Yeah, there's a lot of similarities. All right? So take the last few minutes of class and refine those lines, all right?